I'm Dawn Braithwaite. I'm a Willa Cather Professor of Communication Studies at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. And I'm here to talk to you about the research we've been doing on what we call voluntary or fictive kin. You know, as the holidays approach, we picture people sitting around the dining room table with a warm and loving family. But in reality, we know that not everybody has that situation available to them. It may be because they are geographically don't live close to their family, it may be because they're not emotionally close to their family, or it may be because they're actually estranged from their family. To look at this, researchers uh, that I've been leading at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln and the University of Iowa and the University of Montana have been studying fictive or voluntary kin. We define voluntary kin as those people that we perceive or think about as family but are not related to us by blood and law. In a first study our large research team did, we interviewed 110 people about their voluntary family relationships. We asked them to talk to us about how these families form, how these families function in their lives, and especially how these families communicate. What we found in this first study was four different voluntary family types, and I'm going to talk about just two of them here. The first are what we call substitute families, and this is when the voluntary family stands in for the blood and legal family. This may be because of the death in, a death in the family, or it may be because they're actually estranged and don't have contact with their family. And interestingly and rather happily, there was only one instance of estrangement in this first study. The second type of family are supplemental families, and this is when the family supplements or adds to the uh, blood and legal family that people have. We saw this happen in several different ways. Many of these people reported that they loved their family but just were not emotionally close to them, and so they felt that the voluntary family understood and accepted them more. The second family was when they had uh, different experiences with their families, and this often included gay and lesbian families and who felt that they were closer to their GLBT family than they were to their blood and legal family. And finally, in the third instance, they just were not geographically close enough to their family to have a close relationship and the voluntary family supplemented for their family. In all of the family types that we studied, we did find that these voluntary families are very important to people in their lives. We're now undertaking a second study where we're interviewing people about the challenges that these voluntary families pose for them. For example, we're looking at what do they tell and not tell the voluntary and the blood and legal families about each other. We're looking at how they handle some of the balancing in these two relationships. And we're looking at the contact that these families have. Some people keep these families very separate and some of them knit them very much together. In all that we do, um, we are looking at helping people to have close family relationships in their lives, and especially around the holidays where we really understand and are cognizant of the fact that this is very important for people.